emergency deck came in the day before the storm, which gave us a opportunity, even at that late point in the cycle, to get some things staged. And I'll tell you, the interface with the NRCC, the RRCC, went very well. We, we did a hurricane here, uh, albeit smaller and with less uh, damage downstate, last year. So we had a good sense of what to order in, what to get moving, what to do on the surge. We are still in response. We still have a lot of life-sustaining missions going on. We still have, uh, for, from our perspective, a number of people that need to be sheltered, that need to be cared for, that need to be in transitional housing, that need, in fact, to, to be in a better place. But we also had other technologic challenges that are unlike many we typically face, uh, pumping from, from depths below an atmosphere, which creates whole other technological solutions. Uh, we did 160, 180, 200 pumping missions. We probably did a um, hundred and some odd generator installs. And under very specific emergency Cat B circumstances, we are now going to another part of this population and we're going to rebuilding. So you may see our generator numbers from this point forward kick up again. So, so we are looking to continue to shrink the world of people without power. It is the first time, certainly that I can remember since Katrina, that we have had to, to build a fueling solution uh, to this degree. Not only did we have all of the first responder traffic, essential uh, worker traffic, but we also at times were providing relief to a scant supply for the citizenry. And that, that's a very large undertaking. His name is Luis Quinone. Uh, I work for TSA, working with DHS, with FEMA. Uh, we had six agencies in uh, DHS, uh, also DHS headquarters, so uh, participated, deployed 1,142 folks total uh, to this event. And we got folks involved so far outside of their regular job, got them working with survivors, got them at the pointy end of the stick. It worked well. But it was an extraordinary effort by the DHS family, and it was remarkable. Big, big push from DMAT, a uh, significant push from USAR, the uh, urban search and rescue collapsed building structure. Between what we did through ESF-9, ESF-8, ESF-3, just to name three big ones, ESF-1, we brought in housing solutions like we haven't done since Katrina, birthing ships for our people so that we could relieve congestion within the area so that we could put survivors into those hotel spaces. Step, which is sheltering and temporary essential power, is something that we had to do here in this disaster and something we've never done before. We have a huge uh, population of people, probably on the order of maybe 40,000 families, that have their homes been damaged and they have power now back to the street, but because the, the, uh, of damage to their house, they have to uh, get the uh, cable attached and have to do some minimum repairs to make that, that home a, a legitimate shelter where they could stay while they do their permanent repairs. This was the right thing to do, and even though it took a tremendous amount of work, here's, here's the, the, the really um, important part of this, is A, we're providing with, with this particular program an opportunity we might not have had otherwise. It's about a housing solution, an emergency situation, uh, for sheltering of people. We're going to get into to our public assistance, our infrastructure stuff. We have hospitals that individually may approach a billion dollars. We have the police to fire all the public safety infrastructure. We have an entire volunteer system out on Long Island that has been impacted in the fire service. We've got subways, buses, trains, ferries, all of those things are an integral part of moving the better part of the 13, 14 million people in this immediate area. We probably haven't put this many people in the field, you know, this focused to do a job since Katrina. If we look at, at FEMA, the number is, some, our highest number was 3,700 and change, which is an extraordinary amount. So we're, we're going to be here for the long haul. I mean, we, we promise that to the survivors, we promise that to government, and this is a big disaster. So where we traditionally look at these things and say, how many days, you know, how many months, uh, this thing, we're, we're not looking at that, we're looking at how many problems. I think that's a big difference.